I taught for a couple years, and then I got a call from uh, uh, Dan Duquette uh, from the Montreal Expos, and uh, um, they were looking for, for a manager for their short season A club, and uh, I was teaching at the time, and, uh, and, um, but I, I, I missed baseball, and, uh, and then uh, the opportunity arose where Dan invited me to, to, to come to uh, within the Expos organization and give it a shot, and, uh, and uh, that's how I landed up in Jamestown, my first year as a, as a coach or manager in professional baseball, and, uh, and uh, here I am 20-something 20, 20 years later, I'm right back in the same spot, but uh, I, um, it was, it was, I was very fortunate that year because I had some great players and some great coaches with me. Well, let me tease you. Okay. Here's here's some okay. baseball cards of that time period, and if mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna go down and, and give give me some some vignette or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I can, right off the bat with two of my coaches, and I, again, being a first year manager, to have two of these, uh, you know, very very good coaches with me, uh, you know, I, I was I was fortunate because they helped me out a great deal that year, and uh, and Kevin Malone, who ended up being a GM over with the uh, with the Dodgers, and I think he's still still involved with baseball and a great baseball man, QB Low. Who's a, who's a great pitching coach, and uh, I know he was, uh, you know, he was very helpful to me uh, during that first year. So those two guys in particular, um, and um, Danny Freed. I'm looking at Danny Freed right now as a right-handed pitcher, a control pitcher through strikes, and he was a big part of our success that year um, because he, uh, you know, again he threw strikes. He a college kid and uh, just had a had good control, and he was kind of our mainstay. Uh, again, being around people like uh, you know QV and Kevin was. Uh, Certainly, a, uh, I was very fortunate there. So, um, two p people in in in, uh, in uh, particular that I remember is, uh, you know, we, we had several guys on that, that team that ended up playing in, in the major leagues. You know, and being a first year manager, I think that I was voted manager of the year partially because, uh, you know, we had a very very good record, but we had some talented talented kids and Marquise Grissom, who I think was almost a triple crown winner in that league that year. Um, Joe Sedal, a catcher, a left-handed hitting catcher, who I see right here. Um, also, uh, Timmy Laker, another another good catcher who had some big league time. Uh, um, Wilfredo Cadaro, a young shortstop, uh, 18 years old uh, at the time uh, with us. I mean, you surround yourself with players like that in your first year of managing, and you are very, very fortunate. And, and, uh, and the Expos back then, they, they kept every, everybody together. They didn't move anybody. You know, I thought we'd lose Marquise around halfway during the year because having a, such a great year. And uh, he stayed with us the whole year right to the playoffs. So just, uh, again, seeing names like that with Joe and Timmy Laker and Marquise and, and guys like that, I was just, uh, God, that was uh, Jeff Atha, too, a little second baseman, a little hustler. Yeah, I'm a little Marty Barrett type player. And Laker, too. Laker was a real tall, thin catcher. Um, really, um, I, I liked his swing, but you could you could just tell that he's you know he had a, he had a good swing and and uh, a good arm. Just kind of he was a little shaky behind the plate as far as the receiving, but I think he improved over the year. Of course, Costco too. Brian Costco, college kid, third baseman. Cobb, big big first baseman, right-handed hitter. God, I tell you, this brings back a lot of men. Of course, Marquise, which is a so young looking here in uh, Montreal Expo uniform. But, uh, you know, Marquis, in, 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 in a book we did, which was called Across the Seams mm -hmm. in the History of Baseball, which you're all over. Uh, Marquis, Chrisom says he had a horrible start at the plate in Jamestown. Mm -hmm. And he was quoted as saying, that was the worst start for me ever. Mm -hmm. I was close to packing it in for Jamestown after the first six weeks, and then he got started. Do you remember that? Do you remember I, that? I remember him struggling. I don't remember him struggling that bad. Maybe struggling back for him wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't uh, norm for everybody else. But to me, he was. you could just tell his bat speed, the way he ran balls down in the outfield. A little crude as far as throwing the bases and hitting the cutoff man and even running the bases sometimes. I remember... You know him, 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 kind of running the bases and, and you know having having some tough times there. But you could tell this guy was a, you know, just just an exceptional talent. The way he ran, the boy, the boy, the ball exploded off his bat, and he played hard. He had that look in his eye, and it just uh, a kid that you know. I mean, just a matter of time. You know, it was two, three, four, two, three years, and he's gonna. This kid's gonna play in the big leagues. And and I had a kid like him, like when I was at the Mets, like a Jose Reyes, or. Uh, you know, and you know, just he, those guys just have it. You know, you can just tell right off the bat that these guys, it's just a matter of time before these guys are going to play in the big leagues. Cordero uh, was only 16. Was 16. he part of that 
Uh, I know the the Expos got caught up a little bit signing a few kids younger than they are supposed to. Was Cordero one of those? Guys? I don't know because he looked pretty young when when he was with us, yeah. you know. And I don't, you know, I I can kind of tell a little bit sometimes with certain guys where they they might they say they're sixteen or eighteen or nineteen and they have that twenty five to twenty eight year old body, but he had that young body and he had that long young look about him. But again, he was a shortstop, and eventually you could tell he was because he had he was a thick bodied kid or he had the potential to really kind of gain some weight, and you could tell he was going to be either moving to th to third or first or the outfield. Uh, but he played shortstop with us, a little third, and uh, again, he could hit just a little raw defensively, but you could see that talent and that, uh, that um, all those tools were there with, uh, with, um, with Wilfredo. Yes. Danny Freed had a hell of a year that year. Yes, I remember. He was our go-to guy. I mean, again, and even when we, I remember every fifth day he was on the mound, and he, again, he, he, he was, what made him successful is just the, his ability to throw strikes. I remember he could get that breaking ball over any time for strikes, and he was our go-to guy even and, and carried us right into the playoffs and against Oneana. Yes. In fact, Danny Leon and Danny Freed combined for a 23 and 4 record. Leon, uh, let's see, was a 1.16 ERA. Freed had a remarkable 0 0.67 ERA, just nine earned runs and 121 innings. <laughs> That made me look pretty good as a manager, right? <laughs> pretty good when you have those kind of ERAs and those numbers, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I was, again, I was very fortunate that year, just my first year of pro ball, I said, hey, this stuff's pretty easy, you know, this ain't thing too hard here, but uh, again, talented players, uh, good organization, uh, and uh, that all of that made it all policy possible. Pachowski, a little left-handed hitter, right, line drive hitter, opposite field guy, and uh, Rodney Bodie, outfielder, uh, uh, Mitchell, I remember too, outfielder. Yeah, I had a little trouble with him, but he was okay. Yeah, yeah. These kids look so young. Even the manager looks young here. <laughs> <laughs> Still handsome, I'm telling you. Uh, you, you, you were. It was a hell of a year that year. Uh, ultimately, you guys made it into into the sure. finals, but you also got pulled back before the end of the season. You're, you're right. Yeah. So well, you remember that? Yeah. I was. Uh, see, I was teaching at the time. I was uh, yeah. a high school uh, teacher, and uh, and I had the uh, okay to leave early. To, 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 uh, to come out and uh, to do that and, and, and to coach. And, and then uh, at the end of the year, my uh, supervisor at the high school said, if you're not back here for, uh, for day one of uh, you know, school, uh, you, you won't have a job. You know? And uh, so I was a little dilemma, I remember. I remember going to the Jamestown Airport or whatever, close by Rochester, and taking a flight home and was there for orientation. And then I came back and and um, you know, was there for the playoffs and stuff. But I did miss a few days in QB, and, and Kevin took over for me. So, yeah. But it was a little scary back then because that was my job, it was my <laughs> livelihood. So, and then after that, I ended up quitting teaching and getting uh, going into pro baseball full time with the uh, with the Chicago White Sox. This has been fabulous. Thank you for taking time okay. and, and going down memory lane here. Okay, I enjoyed it. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. And Thank you. I enjoyed that. You're you're very good. You did a nice job with that. Jamestown, New York, home of the Jamestown Expos of the Class A New York Penn League, a team that finished the season in first place on the field and in season ticket sales. The Resource Center for people with mental and physical disabilities was rewarded on this special day as the Expos put on a long-awaited training clinic. These are the kind of baseballs that we use when we play games. It's also the kind of baseballs that they use in the major leagues. The Resource Center Raiders, a disabled softball team, picked up some pointers from the Expos and also made a few themselves. Well, that kind of brings you back down to earth a little bit. You know, you, you're dealing with these type of kids and uh, realize how fortunate you are uh, being in the position you are in. I have a lot of compassion for people that are less fortunate than I, and I think that God has blessed me with a lot of abilities and talents, and I feel that when I can share that with someone a little bit less fortunate, uh, I get a special feeling inside. The two teams worked together side by side and really got into the swing of things. I had a good time. There was a couple of guys on the resource team that I got to be friends with. One old guy looked like George Burns named Nate. We had a good time, you know. We, they want to play. They want to play just as bad as we do, you know. The Resource Center sold almost 500 season tickets, of which a percentage goes back to the center for recreational equipment.
But of course, the benefits go much deeper than that. A little time, a little kindness, and for the disabled who took part, a team picture that's worth a thousand words.